It's an Aussie invention with a backstory full of heart, and not just because it is one. Dr. Daniel Timms created the world's first durable artificial heart, inspired by his father, who was dying of heart failure. And more than 20 years later, it's here and it's a success. Dr. Tim joins me now. Dr. Tim's so lovely to see you. And this is it. This, this is, is what the, all the attention's on at the so moment. It is, yes, it's a titanium heart. Yeah. So an Aussie patient has become the first in the world to leave hospital with one of your artificial hearts. How's that feel? It's pretty remarkable. I mean, you know, the ultimate goal is this device is going to be used for patients to go home and then not actually have to have a heart transplant. And this is a next, you know, monumental step towards that goal. So he lived with the heart for more than 100 days before he got his donor transplant. I mean, we know how long those waiting lists are and it's already saving lives. That's right. And six of them to date and uh, it's been a clinical success the whole time so far. Can you get your head around that? And you're behind it. This is your baby. Yeah, it's, I mean, yeah, and there's a huge team that's coming along with that as well that have just been uh, passionate about, you know, creating a device that could be of benefit to mm. patients suffering from heart failure that they don't have any other options. Okay, so just talk me through how this works. Sure. So inside this device is a spinning, rapidly spinning disc. And this spinning disc uh, pumps the blood to both the body and to the lungs. And you can imagine an artificial heart has to be extremely, extremely durable. Right? Mm. It cannot stop. Um, so the, way, the reason this is durable is that it has three electromagnets inside here that levitate that spinning disc in an uh, electromagnetic field, just like the trains in Asia. And therefore there's no friction, there's no mechanical wear, there's no reason that this device will, will stop if we power it. Okay, so that's amazing. So that levitates as opposed to like beating. Correct. So we actually can recreate a heartbeat by turning the speed up and down once a second. Yeah. So the outflow will increase once a second, just like a, um, a heartbeat that way. So the backstory to this is what I love. You grew up in Brizzy and you spent your childhood tinkering with your dad, Gary, who was a plumber. What role did he play in all of this? Uh, inspiration, obviously. Um, you know, Unfortunately, I had heart failure um, when I was just um, starting a PhD and I was starting to think, what can I apply my engineering skills to? Um, but certainly, you know, his suffering through heart failure, um, not only himself, but also our family, um, it, it's affecting everyone around. Mm -hmm. And uh, just having, you know, some determination then to try to create a device that could maybe one day help him. Unfortunately, we weren't fast enough to do that, uh, but certainly help somebody like him in the future. And, mm -hmm. and we've done that now six times with six families. So the idea was born from something you were doing with your dad. Absolutely, in the, uh, yeah, in the backyard and in the shed. Yeah, so what, what was it? Like, are you guys just kind of making stuff in the backyard and...? Yeah, well, actually, the first um, prototypes that we were making was actually an artificial circulation of the body, right? So we go to Bunnings and we get pipes and, and pipe and fittings to just recreate the lung and the body. Do you get that, how cool that is? Yeah. But, you know, you, you and your dad pop off to Bunnings and come back and you invent something, effectively the early prototype for, for something which is now saving lives. That's, it's a long story, yeah, long journey. Yeah. So you flew in from the States um, so you could watch this artificial heart being implanted here in Australia. What was it like to shake the hand of a man who had your invention inside his chest, who is alive because of you? Yeah, that was fairly surreal and at the end of the day these patients are incredibly brave to you know put that uh, faith in our technology mm -hmm. uh, to keep them alive. Okay but when you take your, your early models and, you, and your drawings and you go and knock on the doors and say hey I've got this great idea, how long did it take before someone said hang on you might be onto something here? Ten years. It was a long journey of ten years um, until we turned up at the doorstep of the Texas Heart Institute. Uh, so there's only a few people around that believed in this kind of technology yeah. um, because at the end of the day most people will not want to make an artificial heart that doesn't have a heartbeat and that's what these generally would do yeah. until we introduce one. But when you are getting the, those, those, those knockbacks or you know it's not quite right, what kept driving you? Why didn't you give up? Yeah, because there is a need. First, uh, first and foremost there's a need. Um, and we could see the limitations of what is around at the moment and we felt, well, we can... Um, you know, approach those limitations and, and fix them. Yeah. Um, and ultimately, you know, having uh, lost my father in 2006, um, that was really then driving, you know, myself and, and uh, pulling the rest of the team mm -hmm. along uh, to create a device that could have potentially saved him, but as mentioned before, is available now to save um, others just like him. What's the long-term goal here? Right, so I mean, at the moment we're using the device as a bridge to transplant until they can get a donor heart transplant. 
Um, but that's not our ultimate goal. Our ultimate goal is to make a device that is as good as a transplant or potentially even better. Wow. Um, that means it can be on the shelf at any time and we don't have to wait for the misfortune of somebody else to then um, donate their organs. Because of your dogged pursuit with this, we could reach a point where you need a heart transplant, you get it. This device is, operates like a heart transplant, then you will just get this at any time. Sadly, your dad isn't here to see it, but um, how does your mum feel about it? Um, yeah, pretty exhilarated. And, you know, of all the milestones we've had along the way, um, yeah, she'll always send me a message and say, your dad would be proud. Um, no much more than, you know, now with a patient leaving the hospital. But it's another milestone, there's more to come, um, and we'll be working hard to, to get them. Well done, and um, I think we, we all know that your dad, Gary, will be so proud of what you've achieved. Absolutely. It is quite phenomenal. Thank you. Of course. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.